Hey guys, Woodruff here. We are elbow deep in eye disorders. So we've talked about vision loss. We have talked about cataracts and now we're going to talk about retinal detachment. And we talked about cataracts. It's also important as you're kind of learning different eye disorders to kind of discern like how serious is it and stuff like that. So when we just talked about cataracts, you know, it's more of a chronic long-term um, condition that happens to most people because of age. Um, you know, there's not a lot of emergencies or serious stuff that can happen like life or death stuff. Um, but when we get to retinal detachment and we're starting to get into emergency stuff, when we talk about about glaucoma, there's like a type of glaucoma that's like life or death. And there's a type of glaucoma that's chronic, stable, um, so you definitely want to pay attention because usually, um, you know, when we have test questions, if there's a life or death thing, we're, we're testing that we you kind of understand like, hey, this is an emergency, you need to get help. So uh, what a retinal detachment is. So a retinal detachment is um, effectively as a result of like very severe vision loss or age or having a previous retinal detachment or, you know, eye trauma. It, people that have had cataract surgery are going to be more at risk for this, diabetes, um, effectively, those are some risk factors. Effectively, what can happen is little holes or breaks can happen in the retina and the retina um, is here. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, we call it, what can happen here is it can detach and like literally like tear. So think of like a piece of paper tearing, but it can happen in your eye. Um, and um, as a result, when the retina detaches, it detaches from blood supply. And when there's no blood supply, there's no oxygen and nutrients. And this leads to um, uh, loss of vision and blindness. So this is an emergency, obviously, because it can lead to a um, it's pretty quick. Um, it's not, it's not necessarily like within seconds usually, um, but a, a pretty rapid, um, loss of vision, especially if we don't catch it early. Um, so yeah, and this always freaks people out. Like every time I teach about this, people are like sitting there like thinking like, oh my God, there's holes, there's holes in the back of my eyeballs. <laughs> so, um, but here, I'm here to tell you that you can have, um, breaks or um, tears in your retina and it doesn't necessarily completely detach. Um, I actually, until I started teaching this, I didn't know that I'd had this, but there was one night when I was a tech years ago when I actually experienced this, um, but I still have my vision. I mean, it's, it's still crap, but <laughs> you know, I still have it. Um, and so, um, uh, but yeah, like um, all the symptoms, like when I look back now, I was like, oh my gosh. And so I asked my eye doctor about it and he kind of compared this to think of it like a plug in a socket. It's just that sometimes um, a plug in a socket can get a little loose. And so it kind of sparks a little bit, or, you know, like some of the visual stuff I was having, but he's like, sometimes it can get plugged in, but sometimes it can completely become unplugged. So retinal detachment is when it becomes unplugged from its power source. And so when I'm unplugged from my power source, I don't have the, um, you know, the same, um, uh, what do you call it? Flow and power energy source that I need. Um, so luckily for me, I got plugged back in. I was just hanging a little loose, but uh, you know, for other people, it doesn't happen so much. And I've had, um, I've had a student or two that has, ha has experienced this and, um, you know, with this, that, um, it can, um, uh, luckily they, they maintain their vision. They had to have the surgery though, which I luckily didn't have to have, but, uh, yeah, anywhere it's emergency, your, um, eyeballs becoming unplugged from its blood source and it can lead to blindness. Oh, let's try again. All right. So let's do a question. So it says, what symptom reported by the client is most consistent? Hello, most consistent with the diagnosis of retinal detachment. All right. So this is looking for, um, you know, these are all saying like these could be symptoms that could be possibly retinal detachment, but which of these is like the most that when I'm looking at this, I was like, there's no way it has to be retinal detachment. So some of these might be general choices. Some of these also might be um, things that are true for other eye disorders, but not retinal detachment. And this is where sometimes we get you, we try to get you to differentiate um, these. And so I definitely recommend um, using some sort of table chart or something to break down the different eye disorders like side by side. So you can really look at those changes. Um, so let's look at answer choice A. Um, so answer choice A says that a client complains of gradual vis vision loss that seems to be worse at night. Well, this sounds like what we just talked about with cataracts that does it's not usually a gradual vision loss with um, with retinal detachment. And um, uh, there's not that it's worse at night. It's kind of all the time because like think of like a socket becoming unplugged. It's not choosing certain times of day to be better or worse. Then we have a co client complaints there of difficulty reading books in smaller print. 
Well, that sounds more like the hyperopia, like where you're having trouble, um, like the farsightedness, not necessarily um, cause like retinal detachments, not that you have like a particular vision change in general, you're going blind. Like you're losing your ability to see, um, a client complains that they see shadows and changing light patterns in their visual fields. Now this sounds more like, you know, remember I talked to you about those sparks. Um, that's kind of what it felt like, like my plug was coming unplugged so that it was starting to get loose and there's kind of sparks and stuff happening. So, I mean, this sounds more aligned with, um, what I was, um, uh, what do you call it? what I was experiencing, but let's look at all the answer choices. Cause just cause you find one you really like, um, sometimes, you know, too, in your head, you're like, Ooh, my professor said some of those words, but maybe the whole answer is incorrect. So let's look and see what our other choices. A, a client complains they're having acute eye pain and decreased vision. So this one looks like it could be it too, but I don't think with retinal detachment that they have pain. Remember how I talked about in my last video, there's a lot of vision loss in all of these, um, but there's only actually one that has pain in it and it's not retinal detachment. Now you would think it's like, it's a ripping and it's a tearing and these there's these retinal holes, but believe it or not, um, with um, retinal detachment, they actually, it's a painless vision loss. Um, so they do not have any pain. So the only one that's the, the, the most consistent one is going to have to be C. So let's get more into what this is going to look like. Um, I'm going to assess for visual loss, do a visual acuity test. Um, and then the doctor is, this is not something I can do. Is going to do like an ophthalmoscope or a slit lamp, um, microscopy, it sounds right. <laughs> um, and so, uh, they're going to do that to actually look in the eye, to look for the, um, detachment itself. Um, <clears throat> you do not have to know in depth about those tests. Um, just again, knowing some of the tests we might do, because really think like, what's my priority here? It's my vision. I'm trying to see, is, am I detached? Cause I need, they need to know if they need to do an intervention and how's, how am I, affected by this. So um, what a patient's going to describe or tell you before the retina detaches is maybe that they're seeing a lot of floaters. They might, um, uh, what do you call it, complain of, uh, you know, like some light flashes, like I said, kind of like the sparking. And I've always called, pronounced this photophobia until my graduate student, thank you so much, Krishana, for pointing this out for me, <laughs> that um, it's actually photopsia. <laughs> so yes, but photophobia sounds like Fantasia, or it sounds like something you would experience in Disney. And I kind of like photophobia better. Um, but just know, as you're watching my videos, I pronounce a lot of things wrong. Um, but there is no pronunciation exams um, in nursing school. If you go to a school that has one, I'm so sorry for you, but um, I've never been one. Like, I mean, I, like I said, I'm still learning some of this stuff and I could spend all of my time Googling to do the perfect pronunciation. Um, but I think my time is better spent elsewhere. So, um, as long as you get the general point, and I put the right word there. I think you're good to go. So photopsia <laughs> or light flashes, um, and a cobweb or hairnet. So kind of think of like, um, uh, what do you call it? Think of it almost like Spider-Man, like when he's putting a Spider-Man shot on your eyeballs, um, you know, what it would look like, kind of like a cobweb or like, you know, it's, it's distorted vision is effectively what it is. Um, so either sparks in the vision, distorted vision, again, think like that plugs coming unplugged. Now, once the, the actual detachment occurs, there's a painless loss of vision. And what pe most people describe is it's like a curtain that's crumbing, coming across their fear of, eh, I can talk, field of vision. Good thing there's not a communication lecture because I would just look at that. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's going to be the same as it is for vision loss. You know, like we, it's going to get better if my vision and other symptoms improve. Um, if my vision gets worse or declines or more symptoms appear, it would be getting worse. Um, and my biggest concern here, you know, for other things, it's just that the vision's getting worse. But for here, I'm concerned about perfusion to my eye and permanent blindness. So this is more of a dun dun dun, like life or death. So medical treatment, I know you're wondering, like, why is this lady laying like this? So uh, <clears throat> what she probably had is what we call an intravitreal bubble. And so a couple of things that we can do for patients that have retinal detachment is effectively think of it, there's a tear. So think of like what happens, you tear a piece of paper, you put some scotch tape, put it together. So it's pretty similar what we're going to do for the eyeball. Um, <clears throat> we're either going to use lasers to um, you know, kind of cinch it back together um, we can put a belt around it to keep it kind of um, together or put it back so it stays together versus, um, uh, you know, having that detachment. Or we can do what's called a bubble. And again, you don't have to know in depth about these procedures, but just for your own nerdiness, if you want to think about it. 
Um, and what the bubble is, is where they literally insert a bubble and in, um, that puts pressure and forces um, that tear closed. And um, the reason this person is in this position is after, depending on your surgeon procedure, et cetera, after the bubble, um, you know, a lot of times they, uh, for the first week or two, I want to say they have to be in this position as much as possible. Cause it keeps the bubble where it's supposed to be. Um, if you think of like, if there was a bubble in like a soda or something that you had, if you turn how, um, the soda is the bubble moves to. And so you always want the bubble to try to be in that um, back position. And so this face down position encourages the bubble to stay where it's supposed to stay, but crazy stuff. And your button like, and yeah, Krishana, my graduate student also informed my students, which I have never like gone that deep into the eye surgery stuff, but um, just that that bubble is able to be absorbed into the body. Cool stuff. Yeah. Um, like, you know, I, no, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to make fun of the eye bubble. Um, anyway, like I said, you don't really have to know in depth about these procedures, but you do need to know the role of the nurse. So again, depending on your procedure, you may have activity restrictions. They may need to lie face down, um, and they may need protective eyewear, especially at night, um, just to protect their eye after that procedure. Uh, there is a very high risk of detachment of the other eye. Once you've had one eye detachment, it puts you very high risk for the other. So you want to remind and reinforce the symptoms. Now, depending on the patient, maybe they didn't have as many symptoms, so they didn't know what they were experiencing. So you want to know what they're to look for. Like, for example, like I said, for me, I had no idea what I was going through um, when I had that um you know, those symptoms and stuff like that. And so, you know, um, you might not be thinking about when you're having it, but going back and being like, Hey, if you had these symptoms, these are, this is kind of what detachment looks like. So pretty much teach them, Hey, your other eye can have a detachment. Um, this is what it looks like, but yeah, that is pretty much it. And so one eye problem left, we're almost there. See you for the next one.